What's up YouTube fragrance family? Tommy with Studio Sense here with another video review. Prada Luna Rosa line is an amazing line of fragrances. Prada Carbon, among them, has spawned some excellent flankers. So what we're gonna take a look at today is Prada Luna Rosa Ocean, the latest entry in the Prada Luna Rosa line of fragrances. So when we come back, we're gonna take a closer look at this new 2021 release and see if it's worth picking up that and more, so stay tuned. So today we're talking about the latest release and the entry of fragrances for the Luna Rosa line for Prada. Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. Let's take a closer look at that presentation. The box is very oceanic looking. It's a gradient from light blue almost to pitch black or, or navy blue, really dark blue. And then you've got your red and white Prada and ocean here and Luna Rosa there. It is an eau de toilette concentration, 100 ml bottle. It's interesting how it talks about the safety clip. It indicates that you might wanna hold on to that because well, on the, the clip itself, it says reposition when carrying. So I guess if you're traveling and you're taking the bottle with you, you wanna put this on because it does prevent the, this one is really tight. The ones before on the other bottles weren't as tight. I guess it's because it's new, but it prevents the atomizer from being depressed and wasting the juice accidentally. The aperture is a bright red and I love that, especially when you're grabbing the bottle, you know exactly how to aim the sprays because it's a really nice bright color, it's easy to see. But the bottle is great looking. It's, it's just a very dark, dark navy blue and I really like that. The glass is that navy blue. It is, you can see through it. The bottom has Ocean Luna Rosa. So basically four colors, black, blue, and red make up the entire bottle with the exception of white. Great looking presentation, very classy looking, typical of Prada and the Luna Rosa line. But what does it smell like? Now, when they first announced this, I could have sworn that I saw caramel. Caramel being a gourmand note. And I was like, how are they gonna pull that off? How are they gonna make a fresh oceanic fragrance, you know, with caramel note? In it okay i'll buy it let's see how that works as it turns out there's no caramel in the fragrance at least now there's no published caramel note in the fragrance let's talk about that note breakdown prada lunarosa ocean features top notes of bergamot pink pepper and artemisia with heart notes of iris lavender and saffron, resting on a base of vetiver, musk, and patchouli. I gotta admit, I'm a little bit disappointed. I was hoping that there would actually be a caramel note in there because I wanted to see how they were gonna pull that off. But it makes sense that there's not a gourmand note in a summertime fresh fragrance. However, there are some spicy, interesting notes in there. Maybe mixing it up a little bit with the Artemisia and the Saffron. Let's see, you know, kind of what they do with the spices in this fragrance. So let's check out that juice. Good. So the atomizer spits out quite a bit of juice. It's a really good quality bottle and atomizer. It's, it's very nice, it's very nice. It's uh, it's an enjoyable fragrance. I was thinking that it might stray super far from the Luna Rosa line when I read that, that it had caramel in it. You can tell it's a Luna Rosa fragrance because it's got that nice balsamic, that kind of aldehydic powderiness to it that I really like. I like that it's keeping the roots intact. This is very much like Prada Luna Rosa in terms of it being balsamic, a little bit powdery, 
a little bit aldehydic, not overtly, but just enough to give you that sensation of a very modern fragrance. It's got that modern feel to it. The iris is what's causing that. Of course, the iris is obvious in this. It kind of gives it some, some depth, some intensity. There's a good bit of pink pepper, a good bit of bergamot in here. So it's a very bright, juicy open. Now, if you've seen the Ocean commercial featuring Jake Gyllenhaal, he's on one of the you know Luna Rosa yachts there. But it does make a good point about the fragrance. A lightly, I wouldn't call it briny, but lightly salty. It's not your typical briny ocean aquatic fragrance. However, it's more aldehydic than it is is aquatic. I don't necessarily think of ocean when I smell this, and I felt that that might be the case. I want to spray it on my skin. We'll see where it goes from here. This is always the case with notes that are either musky or that feature leather or suede or some kind of textile. It comes out a lot more when married with heat, the heat of your skin, the chemical composition of your skin, and that's the case here. See, I'm getting a little bit of a slightly resinous feel along with the aldehydes. So you've got that bright, juicy bergamot, that pink pepper that gives it some volume. It's a really nice open but it's a great introduction into that heart. I think that's where the Artemisi and the Saffron are as well. And then into the base of, of Haitian vetiver, which is that really nice, lightly dry, but overtly green, kind of adds a counterweight or a counterbalance to the aldehydes. I like how it's opening up too quite a bit in the heart. This is not at all a typical ocean or aquatic fragrance. I don't want to say that it's inappropriately named because obviously they were going for the whole oceanic theme. I think very similar to the way that Carbon ended up being similar to Dior Sauvage, this is a very modern, stylized, kind of modernistic masculine man's fragrance that's not necessarily an aquatic fragrance. I feel like it's more of a masculine take on a slightly aquatic fragrance. I don't know that this is the best Luna Rosa fragrance that Prada has released thus far, but I like it. It's, it's gonna be very wearable. Prada's not gonna create something. It's not gonna be mass appealing. So this is definitely gonna be mass appealing. Is it gonna turn heads though? Is it going to get you compliments like Carbon has and does? I don't know that that's gonna be the case, quite possibly. I don't necessarily think it's going to project as well as carbon, but that's not to say that this doesn't have its merits, and I'm gonna definitely give it some wear, put it through its paces, and find out what's great about it and what's not so great about it, and then give you guys a full-on review. There is a level of refinement to all of Prada's fragrances. I think that is no less the case for Ocean. So this is definitely gonna be something that you can wear dressed up. You can wear it upscale as equally as well as you can wear it dumbed down or casual. Uh, that's the great thing about Prada's fragrances. They're very hyper versatile when it comes to being signature scents, or what season to wear them in and what occasion or environment to wear them in. Well guys, that's a wrap on my unboxing and first impressions of Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. I like it. I think it's a really nice, lightly aquatic fragrance that's got a really nice masculine manly smell about it and it should because kind of the tagline or the idea behind it especially if you watch the commercial he's out in the middle of the ocean he pushes himself as far as he could possibly go which happens to be this red moon which is what Luna Rosa stands for so it's a nice positive idea behind the fragrance that we can achieve whatever we want to as long as we push ourselves and I just really like that whole idea along with the presentation um, but I feel like the execution of the fragrance itself might be just a bit under what they were reaching for. I don't know that wholly is the case until I give it a full-on review, so be on the lookout for that review coming up in the near future. Thanks so much, though, for stopping by and tuning in, checking out today's unboxing and first impressions, and as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you tomorrow.